So Phoenix is going to be sharing with us uh, our topic of the day. He is going to be talking to us for a couple of minutes. And I would like for a volunteer to pray for Felix. Para una, un, un valiente, un hombre valiente en Cristo, because we just proclaim that there are brave men of Christ here. So I am absolutely sure that there is a man of Christ Woo! in this place. Amen. I was wondering how long I was going to have to talk. <laughs> Oh, 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 to honor and glorify you as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the Priest of Priests. We ask for we ask blessing Mother Mary most holy for your grace, for your love that He shows the exact same love that He has for Corazón Puro and for you and for you, Lord Jesus Christ, upon everyone here, so they may experience the same love and that they may get something out of this talk. May your spirit come down upon him for he is a great man and he has a tremendous love for you like just like this entire crowd has a tremendous love for you we may learn we may glorify you for you are the holy one you are the lord and you are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit and the glory of god the father amen amen Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of death. Amen. I do well, I do For my people in the retreat. Amen. Praise God. That's good. All the time. God is good. Dios es bueno. Todo el tiempo. Todo el tiempo. Dios es bueno. You didn't confess it with that one. Dios es bueno. Todo el tiempo. Amen. All right. So, a few things. We're going to be having a conversation. Amen. Amen. That means you and I interact. Eso quiere decir que ustedes y nosotros vamos a interactuar. Amen. So, I don't want you to be like, just nod because I don't see nods. I need to hear you. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, as Liliana said, and my name is Felix. My name is Felix. But if you feel more comfortable, si te sientes más cómodo, you can call me Felix. So, I got some good news for you guys, okay? Yo tengo una buena noticia. Que Cristo te ama. That's it. No. There is good news. This entire room is filled with superheroes. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? This entire room is filled with superheroes. Este cuarto entero, esta habitación entera, está llena de superhéroes. Amén? Amén. ¿Qué sucede? No son superhéroes porque usan el underwear afuera de la ropa. It's not, you're not a superhero because you wear your underwear outside your clothes. Because all the superheroes nowadays. That's not why you're a superhero. Why you're a superhero is because you have a superpower. Amen? Amen. Now, whenever I think of superpower, I always get a reminder of Spider-Man, the first movie. Not the one that came out now. I don't like it that much. Uh, <laughs> like I said, it hace mucho. And at the end, I don't know if anybody remembers, this was my favorite quote. He goes, whatever her life it holds in stores for me, I will never forget these words. With great power comes great responsibility. Lo que sea que la vida tiene para mí, yo nunca voy a olvidar estas palabras. Con un gran poder viene una gran responsabilidad. Then he says something else, but it has to do with the inspired man. That has to do with this. <laughs> so, what is the superpower? Anybody take a stab at it? Anybody take a hint? Anybody take a guess? 
Jesus. 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 Amen. Oh. Close, close. But the superpower that I'm here to speak to you about today is the superpower of sex and chastity. It's oh. one superpower. Amen. Es un solo poder. Superpoder de los superhéroes es el poder de la sexualidad combinado con la castidad. Amén. ¿Qué sucede? Again, with great power comes great responsibility. El buen poder viene una responsabilidad. The responsibility of living sexual, sexuality through cha with chastity comes with the responsibility of humility, humility and charity. La responsabilidad de vivir nuestra sexualidad con castidad viene a través de la humildad y la caridad. Now I just said a whole bunch of money for Jumbo. You're like, what the heck is he talking about? Well, I got some news for you. I, I'm going to be bringing news the whole day today. So tengo más noticias para ustedes. You might have not heard this in church before, but you're going to hear it today. And take it in your hearts, take it in your minds. If anything, take this part today so you can start living it. Amen. This is something that you probably don't hear in church. Esto es algo que tú no has escuchado en una iglesia tal vez anteriormente, pero que hoy lo vas a escuchar. Sex is good. Oh, that's kind of nice. Our bodies are good. Amen? La, el sexo es bueno. Y nuestros cuerpos son buenos. Amen? Why do I say that? If you go to Genesis, chapter 1, verse 31, at the end of everything, you know, it says God created a light, God created a darkness, it, eh, digo, creó la luz, creó la tierra, creó los animales, y al final de todo, vio Dios que era bueno. bueno. So if God created everything, and He saw that it was good, that includes our sexuality, amen? amen. Eso incluye nuestra sexualidad. Y Dios la creó buena. Eso quiere decir que como Dios me creó a mí, y te creó a ti, 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 and in that means we're all good. Amen? amen. I think. No, we are all good. Todos somos buenos. But what happens? What happens is our sexuality has been broken. Nuestra sexualidad ha sido rota. Y se ha perdido. Tenemos el superpoder todavía. You have the superpower. And out there they're going to tell you that you have the superpower. But they're going to cut out part of the superpower. You just have your sexuality. And that's where it ends. El problema está en que allá afuera sí te van a decir que tú tienes el poder y que tú eres un superhéroe, if you will. Pero solamente te van a decir que tienes tu sexualidad y todo el mundo se olvida de la castidad. Entonces se pierde la responsabilidad de la humildad y la caridad. Wow, qué nice. Pero el punto es: we are made in the image and likeness of God. Somos hechos a imagen y semejanza de Dios. Entonces, eso quiere decir that each and every single one of us, combined together with our sexuality, have been made good by God. That means our sexuality is good. As per the dictionary, if you look at the dictionary and you look for chastity, busca por la castidad, hay dos definiciones que siempre se utilizan. La primera es la pureza. The first one is the purity. That's the first definition of chastity. And the second part, which is the one that I'm not so much in agreement with, is abstinence. What happens? Uh, just put, put, put a stop there, just in case you're, you're going ahead, ahead of yourselves. Don't get ahead of yourselves, no se adelante. What I mean by abstinence is, abstinence means saying no to sex, amen? La abstinencia quiere decir decir no al sexo. That's not what chastity is. La castidad es decir sí al sexo, is saying yes to sex, but according to the moment in your life that you're living. Dependiendo del momento de tu vida, dependiendo de la vocación que tú estés viviendo en este momento, en ese momento tú dices sí al sexo, y eso trae una responsabilidad. That brings a responsibility. So you're saying yes to live your sexuality depending on the stage of life you're in. Now, purity, that part I agree with, as said by John Paul II, it's a requirement for love. This is all about love. Esto es la parte principal de nuestra sexualidad y de la castidad. Este superpoder. In one word, it's love. Amen? Now, what happens? And what has happened? And why out there we're just learning half of the power? Porque allá afuera estamos aprendiendo la mitad del poder. Because again, it's, we've been broken. 
Our society has been broken. I'm not going to give you too much, too much of statistics, yeah? But I don't want to bore you with that. But I'm going to give you some. Amen? Amen. So, about 83% of the people now TV shows make reference to sexuality. 83% of the shows on television make reference to sexuality. But that's not the, the end of the sentence. They make reference to sexuality outside of the context of marriage. Yeah. Hace referencia a la sexualidad y de vivir tu sexualidad y tu libertad fuera del contexto del matrimonio. And that's where it ends. And that's what kids and adults and jóvenes and everybody all like it's learning their superpower from. It's kind of like me, I have said this before to some people, it's kind of like me, I have a Mac, and go into a Microsoft store and tell them fix my Mac. Mm -hmm. Kind of doesn't work, amen? amen. They're not going to know what, what I'm showing them. They might know that it's a computer, that's where it ends. Entonces no podemos ir a donde quien no nos creo a recibir instrucciones de cómo vivir. Amen. Amen. amen? But the other part is that the enemy works overtime. The devil is working overtime, ladies and gentlemen, and we want to take vacation and days off. Nosotros queremos tomar tiempo libre cuando el enemigo está trabajando horas extras. As it says in 1 Peter, um, chapter 5, verse 8, Sean prudentes porque su enemigo, el diablo, anda como un león rugiente buscando a quien devorar. Be prudent because the enemy, the devil, is roaming like a, lot, like a fierce lion seeking who to devour, the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I hope you're awake here. The enemy is working extra hours, brothers and sisters. El enemigo está trabajando horas extras to get you, to get you, to get me, to get all of us here. We can't take days off. No podemos dormirnos, como dice, como dice the old, um, ¿cómo que se llama? Refrán, camarón que se duerme se lo lleva a la corriente. We can't fall asleep. Chastity. It's living your sexuality. But you have to become aware. You have to become informed. Because there are certain things that are, they're saying out there that are not the way you're supposed to live it. They're just, just giving you half the story. They're telling you only the half of the story. And with the half of the story, you can't know the final. Or you'll get the final wrong. Amen? So, all this mumbo jumbo. Why should I pick this mumbo jumbo of chastity? Again, chastity comes with the responsibility of humility and charity. La humildad y la caridad. ¿Qué me puedes decir qué significan esas dos palabras? I'm just throwing words out there, but you're like, oh, he's been talking about this. I don't know what he means. Humility. Anybody? Anybody? Humildad. Sí. Yes. Knowing that there is a God that God created us. Knowing that there is a God that God created us. Higher power. I had to hear that again. Come up here. Just so they can hear it. It's a little bit of a That's where I was getting at. All together with the combination of what she said. Um, the Holy, it's a privilege and honor that the Holy Spirit works through us and that God works within us. And it's just an honor and privilege to pray, proclaim His name every day. So that's me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Un aplauso de mano. Now, what that means is humility. In the words that he said and the words that she said is knowing and recognizing in your life and in everything that you do that you can't do chastity. You can't live your sexuality according to the way God wants you if you don't allow God to do it in you. Tú no puedes vivir tu castidad, tú no puedes vivir tu sexualidad de la manera que Dios quiere si tú no permites que el Señor lo haga a través de ti. Knowing that there's a God and allowing Him to work. That's why I said the combination. No es solamente saber que hay un Dios, porque cualquiera sabe que hay un Dios. Hay un ladrón que le pide al Señor que le deje robar, como dice la canción. It's not just that. It's besides knowing the Lord, knowing that there's a God, knowing Him and allowing Him to work in you, that you live your sexuality and your chastity. That's humility. But humility in general, again, it's just knowing that God is working in you, and that it's not you, and that you can't do anything on your own, que solamente Dios lo puede hacer a través de ti. And I'll get back to that later. 
What is charity? La caridad. ¿Qué es la caridad? Anyone? Yes. Selfless giving. Allá atrás. Love. Love. Amen. Selfless giving, love, any uptakers? They're right, by the way. I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm just, I need, I need more, I need more feedback. Over here. I'm giving everything you got without worrying if what you're going to be left with. Giving everything you've got without worrying what you are going to be left with. This is what charity is. In its own, charity is being a self gift, giving yourself completely and entirely. Sin esperar nada cambio, number one. But it's not, I give you something and I'm over here back in my head like, oh, but I, I gave her like my cookie, so what happened? Like, you know, like, I know that 10 years from now, yo quiero galleta porque yo te la mía. No, that's not the way it works. It's not that you selfless give, it's that you truly give without expecting anything in return. That you truly become a gift. Esa es la caridad, que no es dar, dar lo que me sobra. Es dar todo de mí, sin esperar nada a cambio. And so, the way that you live your chastity is a combination of humility and your charity. What does that mean? You're always being a self-gift, knowing that God is working through you to be that gift to that other person depending on the stage of life you're living. Que dependiendo del estado de vida en el que tú estás viviendo, tú en caridad eres un regalo para otra persona sabiendo que tú eres un regalo de Dios para esa persona. Y eso depende de tu estado de vida. So I'm going to give you some pointers. Um, I'm going to try... Uh, oh, well, I'm just going to go with it. But for example, I'm going to give you some examples. Um, the, the most common and the most obvious example is extramarital sex. Sex before marriage. Amen? Es sexualidad antes del matrimonio. Es el más obvio. And yes, I'm going to mention the obvious and the fearful stuff. You know, why not? STDs, pregnancies, broken homes, etc., etc., etc. I'm not going to get into details because I'm not here to scare you. Amen? No voy a entrar en detalles porque no estoy aquí para asustarlos. No voy a darles susto. Es que reciban el conocimiento para que empiecen a vivir what you're called to live anyways. It's kind of like, hey, where do you live? I live here, but I stay downstairs. I don't enter the building. <laughs> now, what happens? What happens with this is your body is making a promise. Scientifically speaking, forget the whole Jesus thing for like two seconds. Please don't do that, not even, but try to, try to think of two seconds, not Jesus thing. Your body is the sign for one partner and one partner only. Tu cuerpo está diseñado para un compañero y un compañero solamente. So what happens? Sexuality, it's meant for bonding as well as for procreation. But what happens is when it happens outside of the context of marriage, you're bonding with a whole bunch of people. And at the end of the day, cuando tú llegas al regalo of your future spouse, are you giving them some, some, something raggedy? Uh, the mopping cloth, el que tú le estás regalando. What happens when it gets to the point that you are getting married and you have that significant other, what you're giving them is the leftovers. Remember, charity, complete gift. No pedazo, no partes, no parcial, completo, a través del poder del Señor. Amen? Amen. So this is what happens, and this is why I would say no. No in the sense of no extra matter, but yes, to waiting for my future spouse. To give them that gift that God has gave me for them. Dios te da un regalo. He's like, oh, pero Dios me da un regalo para que yo lo de palante. Well, my brothers and sisters, that's where you find and fulfill yourselves. Ahí es que tú te encuentras y tú te completas. Tú sabes cuál es tu propósito a través de darte a ti mismo a tu compañero que el Señor ha reservado para ti. Amén? Next specific, not too specific. El adulterio. Yes, married people are called to live chastity as well. You might do a Scooby-Doo right now and be like, Whoop. Yes. Los casados también están llamados a vivir la castidad. Because again, as we said before, chastity is not just not having sex. When you're in a marriage, you are also called to live your chastity. How or why? Because you have a spouse that you have to devote and give yourself completely to. That means fidelidad. Anybody knows what that means? Faithfulness. Fidelidad. Fidelity. Anyone? Anyone? Yes. Hmm? Faithfulness. No? Okay. 
Anyone else? Fidelidad. Being faithful. Ser fiel. Yes. Loyalty. Loyalty. Anyone else? Sticking to your promise. I like that one. Excellent. All right. So let's keep it at that for now. Sticking to your promise. That makes it like in plain English. Yes. Continue your journey with your spouse to be close to your God. Continue your journey towards God with your spouse. Amen. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? These are all the definitions of, of fidelity or faithfulness. Pero mucha gente piensa que ser fiel es, oh, I don't, I don't cheat, I don't kiss anybody, I don't do things for anybody else, but no. Fidelidad no es solamente de las acciones físicas, pero de tus pensamientos, de tus sentimientos y de lo que tú ves. What does that mean? That means that just because you're, you know, just in, when you're married, you spend your whole time thinking about somebody else. Eso es entrando en adulterio. When you're married, you spend your whole time looking at somebody else. Eso es entrando en adulterio. And that's not living your chastity within marriage. Most of you are not married here, so um, this doesn't apply, but it will apply if you are called to marriage, amen? amen? So, keep that in mind. Next part. The next part is people forget about the outward, yes. And intercourse and, and sexuality outside of marriage. But when people go inward, I'm not going to get into specifics. I think some of you know what I mean. Uh, but what happens is people start looking at their desires and, and, and their thoughts as a way to satisfy themselves sexually, amen? ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Que muchas personas dicen, nadie se está yendo, nadie está saliendo, nobody's getting hurt. Because it's just me and myself and I'm looking inward. But if you go back to chastity, it's humility and charity, being a self-give. Where are you giving yourself to where you're just emptying yourself of nothing? You're not giving yourself to anybody. That is, nobody's getting hurt. So you are nobody? Just a question to pose. Just because you're looking out there and you're like, I'm not hurting anybody because I'm just doing this by myself because nadie se está hiriendo, no quiere decir que tú no seas nadie y que tú no estás hiriendo y tirando a la basura un regalo. That you're turning the Lord's gift into garbage go straight into the shoe. Ahí con la, con la bolsa de la basura que están allá afuera. Right here in this garbage can. That's where it belongs. That's what you're saying. Nobody's getting hurt. And AKA, I'm throwing myself in the garbage. So, I'm not going to get too much into specifics, but that's the other part, looking into yourselves. Now, that also goes in hand with the things that you look at, the things that you see. Cuidar la castidad de tus ojos. ¿Por qué? Because that's how you learn fidelity. That's how you learn to be faithful. De nada me sirve que yo that I claim that I'm faithful, que yo, que yo diga que yo soy fiel, si mis ojos están distraídos total y completamente con todo lo que me pasa por el frente. What does this mean for the guys? I'm going to talk to the girls in a minute. This means that you do not look at a girl like she, like you're going into a carnicería to buy meat. Mm. Esto quiere decir que tú no vas a mirar a una mujer como que tú vas a una carnicería a comprar pollo y tú estás mirando el mulo o la pechuga o lo que vayas a comprar. No. That's not the way it works. Women have a dignity. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Women have a dignity, and you must look at her as such. The same way you would look at your mother, the same way you would look at your sister, the same way you would look at the mother of our Savior. They have a dignity. They're not parts that you're going to buy for dinner. It's more than that. They have a dignity. And you are called, yes, to live that by guarding your eyes. And if at first all it takes is for you to be like this, then by all means you're going to hit a pole. <laughs> but it takes more than that, and I'll give you pointers on that later. Is that you start recognizing them as what they are. They're not just a body. Es una mujer con una mente, con un espíritu con alma y una dignidad. And they must be looked at as such. Well, the girls. Sometimes you girls are no help. 
Really? You girls are no hugs sometimes. If they don't ayuda, no me sea nosotros. Y nos la pone bien difícil. Pero bien difícil. That sometimes, even the other girls are looking. That's how difficult you make it sometimes. That so you don't get the guy's attention, you get another girl's attention. And it's like, help me out some. Ayúdame un poquito. You have a dignity. If you are looking for a certain type of attention and you're doing it by the way that you dress or by the way that you carry yourselves, then believe me, you're not going to find your spouse there. Créeme que tú no vas a encontrar a tu esposo así. La atención que tú vas a recibir es de aquello que te está mirando como si tú fueras un pedazo de carne en la cancería. What happens? First thing is what you wear. Watch what you wear. That does not mean that um, your eyes also. Because girls are capable of looking at a guy in a certain way. Careful with your eyes. Because, oh, I'm a girl, so it's okay. It's not as bad as me, as a guy looking at me. But I'm a girl, so it's okay for me to look. No. It's not okay. Because just as much you're being unfaithful to the charity and humility that you're supposed to save for your spouse. Amen? Amen? Amen. Are we here? Yes. Are we here? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. But also... Yes, I'm still talking to the girls. I'll get back to you guys in a minute. Um, just because you wear a skirt, because you're wearing a turtleneck, does not define your dignity solamente. Because your behavior is part of it. You can dress like that, amen, but if the next thing you know is you walk up to a guy and you sit on his lap, then it's the same as if you were sitting on his lap. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not going to be able to do that. You're not going to be able to do that. You're not going to be able to do that. You're not going to be able to do that. I mean, girls, I'm sorry. De la forma que tú también actúas, habla de tu dignidad. Your language. I've heard some stuff. I just heard girls say some stuff. I'm on the train. I'm like, Lord, ¿quién enseñó a hablar? Because really, how, can, how is it possible that every other word that you say, if you were on TV, has to be beeped out? Seriously, the way you carry yourself speaks de lo que tú eres y de tu dignidad. No es solamente tu ropa. Yeah, your clothes is part one. But the way you carry yourselves, the way you speak, and the things you say, and the conversations you have, are part of your dignity. De nada sirve, otra vez, que te vistas con, con, como se, I forgot the, the name of it right now, but the, the veil is that, um, must have been aware, for, for, uh, Sorry. Sorry? Poor guys. Well, that veil. That veil. That veil. Google it. You'll find it. I forgot the name of it, even though I wrote a paper on it like two weeks ago. But I you give you un ensayo acerca de eso hace dos semanas, pero se me olvidó el nombre. Uh pero even if you dress like that, it means nothing if the way you carry yourselves speaks otherwise. Es una combinación de tu comportamiento junto con tu vestimenta. And that speaks of the charity that you're going to give to your fellow brothers as you help them guard their eyes para que ellos no caigan en pecado. Us men, we are very visual. Somos bien visuales los hombres. I'm not saying that women are not. Pero los hombres son más visuales. Y entonces, si todavía no nos ayuda, se nos hace un poquito más difícil. Un poquito es, you know, being gentle with the word. Guys, Going back to you guys. Yes, she might dress a certain way. But yes, she might be broken. And yes, that may be the only way that she learned to get attention. Si, ella puede vestirse de una manera. Si, ella puede actuar de una manera. Pero tal vez, ella ha sido herida en su vida. Y esa es la manera que ella me enseñaron o que ella aprendió. Amen? What's your job? Throw it out there. Over your head. Your job is to inform her. As a gentleman of Christ, you tiene que dejarle saber in humility and charity, sister, X, Y, and Z. Don't shout her out in front of everybody. By the way, don't do that. That we don't do. When you're correcting anybody, because I've seen people do this, yes, sometimes you mean well by the correction, but you're correcting somebody, you just go like, excuse me, in front of everybody, like, what are you wearing? No. That's not the way. Or like, uh, no. Put 
Pause. That's not the way. Pull them aside. Talk to them. But don't talk to them like they're not. Talk to them like they have a dignity and that they are una criatura del Señor, una hija del Señor, con una dignidad. And that's the way you speak to them because that's the way that God made them. Don't scold them because they don't need that from you. They get that from their parents. That's not what you. That's not what they need. They need to be aware that they will help you live.